So now it's my favorite part where we get to talk and hear from our customers. And today it's a very special day because we're actually being hosted by our customers. I'm here at Corsair Gaming in the Corsair Game Room. And I'm joined today by Tom Cullen. Tom is the CIO of Corsair. So thanks for hosting us here today, Tom. Maybe you give the audience a little bit of background on yourself and Corsair Gaming. Sure, I've been with the company for six months now as our CIO. Corsair is an industry leader in high performance gear and technology to enable gamers, content creators, and PC enthusiasts. What's unique about Corsair's integrated system is that you can interconnect all of your components and control it centrally with our IQ software, which further enhances not only your capability, but also your overall experience, whether you're gaming or streaming. And what's interesting about the company as well is that we're always, always pushing the innovation envelope. So as you can tell from everything you see behind you, that we're passionate about innovation and continue to raise the bar every single day. So this is great. So a cool place to be, <laughs> obviously an exciting place to work. For Corsair, what's the last year and a half been like for your company, industry? Kind of what challenges have you had to deal with in this time of constant change? Sure. So it's been quite a challenge. So I've been with Corsair for about six months now. And what I will say is that although we've continued to grow through organic growth and acquisition, that we haven't been immune to the supply chain issues that have been going on globally in our industry and pretty much every industry. Yep. And so as a result, as you've heard, if you listen to our recent analyst call with our CEO, Andy Paul, 2021 revenues have been held back at least 10% due to supply chain issues, especially given the, the challenge with uh, graphics processing units and, and the lack of availability, but also pricing in the retail channel. So as a result, it's been a bit of a challenge for us, like everyone. But at the end of the day, you know, the, during the pandemic, I think we all saw an uptick in business. And a lot of it was because all of a sudden everyone's at home. Everyone's at home gaming, streaming, and for most of us on video conferences all day. And so as, as a result, many people decided to upgrade their equipment um, at home to not only increase their overall experience, but then just have better capability. And so while all this was going on, we also embarked in our Oracle eBusiness suite upgrade to the cloud. So just to compound everything. So it's been an interesting six months, but as an industry, it's been a fascinating couple of years. That's quite a six months, dealing with the pandemic, dealing with work from home, returning to the office, spike in demand in your business, but then some constraints. So, so exactly. in interesting. Now, you mentioned you run an e-business suite. My understanding is you're running a highly customized e-business suite and uh, hosted on AWS. So we kind of partially moved to the cloud. Now, the decision was made at that time for Corsair to move to our SaaS applications. Um, Correct. And the company at the time selected Oracle and Oracle Fusion applications. So mm -hmm. can you tell the audience a little bit of the whys? Like, what was the decision-making process? Why did you decide to replace the existing e-business suite system and, and move to the Oracle cloud? Sure. So like many companies today, we decided to take a cloud-first strategy um, as, as our overall IT strategy, just to accelerate our digital transformation. And if you look at what we've done so far, we're already running parts of supply chain management and human capital management in Oracle Cloud. And you're right, we're running a heavily customized older version of eBusiness Suite, and we're actually in the process of migrating that to the cloud. So as you can imagine, a pretty substantial undertaking. But one of the benefits to cloud in my experience is that it forces you to reconsider all of your customizations. And so look at standard functionality and out-of-box best practices. We created a process called Path to Standard internally. And what that did in partnership with your product uh, team is we re-rationalized all, all of our customizations and as a result ended up with, with probably less than one third of what we originally started out with. It's quite amazing a uh, path to get there and that much progress. Yeah, exactly. And so my goal always was, was to be as standard as possible. And I think one of the other big benefits to cloud is that you get a release every quarter with new functionality. And so for people like me who have been around for a while and have done many upgrades, you can avoid the every couple of year massive upgrade, which many of us have come to dread over time. Right. So, you know, <clears throat> I tend to think of Corsair, and especially the industry you're in, as kind of brand new and up and coming. But as you said, 20-year-old company, huge <laughs> shifts with the change that we've all been going through and able to rationalize your, your business process. So in addition to Fusion applications, uh, I know that Coursera is a design partner with us, an early adopter for mm -hmm. what we're talking about here at this main show, the Oracle Supply Chain Analytics. Can you explain to the audience so what's that project been like, what do you hope to accomplish, and what do you really gain from uh, the analytics, and specifically the supply chain analytics? Sure. And so if you look at analytics as a whole, what, you know, one of the things we looked at was during the discovery phase, and through the design phase, we ended up with 400 custom reports from both supply chain, but other areas of our business as well, which is a bit overwhelming. And so that, that forced us to take a pause and a relook around what we're actually doing and how we want to approach it. 
We'd heard about Fusion Analytics Warehouse, but we didn't have any experience with it. So we decided to pilot it with our business users using our data. And so what we found is that the pilot was hugely successful just based on the KPIs or the key performance indicators that are available out of box with Fusion Analytics Warehouse. And so given that, it was a unanimous decision to move forward. And since then, we've, we've begun on the journey. Well, this is what I said at the beginning. <laughs> My favorite part of the show is hearing from customers. And I really get feedback from our customers. This is the best. And you've just kind of encapsulated why, right? It's amazing kind of the, the story and the journey you've been on. Now, how has that interaction with Oracle been? I, I opened the show talking about our customer first centricity and the changes we're trying to go through. So tell us a little bit, you know, how's the journey been? Feedback for us. How's Oracle doing from a partner perspective? Absolutely. And I'll give you an example using the Fusion Analytics Warehouse implementation. So by looking at standard functionality out of the box with the key performance indicators, we're gonna be able to reduce the number of custom reports by 80 to 85%. So if you look at what that's gonna do from a development resource, significant reduction in the amount of development resources that are gonna be necessary, not to mention the supportability long-term. Um, but also I, what I meant to mention earlier is that the standard out-of-box connectors with the Oracle modules that we run, supply chain management, as you had mentioned, human capital management, enterprise resource planning, We'll pull all of that data into a centralized repository with a robust analytics engine on top. And therefore, what we try to enable at that point is end user self-service analytics, which is our goal. And the reason why we were able to realize all that is through the strong partnership we have with Oracle, because your product team was with us every single step of the way in evaluation. And we wanted to look at an experiment with supply chain management in particular, which you mentioned we're an early adopter of. We know that all the analytics right now weren't available because we're early adopting technology. However, FAW is going to be able to provide all of that visibility out of the box, which, which we're really looking forward to. Another thing we're looking forward to is artificial intelligence. So as we continue to mature on the platform, what we're hoping to do is take advantage of AI. And really, I think competitive advantage comes from being able to predictively model what's going to happen with your business, model out the scenarios, look at the implications, and make decisions. And when I look at data and, and what it can do to tell the story of your business, I not only look at internal, but external. So for example, if we're able to model out different channel velocity um, throughout our business, but then overlay that with external supply chain factors, that's predictive analytics that many people won't have. So we intend to take full advantage of that as well. That's great. Well, again, I can't thank you enough. I think the audience, you know, hearing this story and this transformation you're going through um, is really uh, have a lot in common with a lot of our customers, heavily customized system needing for information. And then again, the, the pros and the cons of this pandemic with sometimes high demand, but then some the constraints to adapt quickly. So, you know, we uh, really appreciate your partnership and we're really looking forward to helping you get to the success uh, that you've achieved. And thanks for hosting us at this really cool uh, game room. And uh, hopefully you'll kind of teach me how to use some of these games and some of the technology here. It's great. Absolutely. Right. Well, thanks for having me. Right. I Pleasure. appreciate the strong partnership. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.